Welcome everybody to the Monday, May 16th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. If I call the meeting to order the first item on the agenda, approve the minutes of May 9th, 2022. Everybody get a chance to look at them? Mm -hmm. Look great. That was nice. So make a motion to approve the minutes. Aye. Second. Aye. Aye. All in favor, it's unanimous. Very good. Um, warrants, we have none. Meetings attended by select board members. Erica? Um, none for the last okay. uh, Well, I went to the hearing. Uh, I think it was last Thursday, was it? I forget. Tuesday for the cell phone? Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday yeah. was it? Yeah. I can't remember. But it was, you know, and it was well attended. Yeah. It was right here. Um, it was mostly very supportive of the tower by pretty much all of the people from Conway. <laughs> and then there were some people not from Conway who are pretty opposed to extending cell tower communications in any way. And if they could block it by shutting down the tower, they're all for that. Um, For, uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, the FCC ruling is that we can't take we can't take health dangers of of, of electromagnetic radiation that the feds have governed as okay. We can't use that to oppose the tower. So we could block the tower by saying by not granting them any of the waivers that they want. Right, they want a height waiver. Yeah, and that's but and there are towns that just don't grant. Those variances, period, unless there's a super. Uh, the town of Ashfield, you know, although you know they have recently approved the tower that that, but but the, uh, a threatened lawsuit by local citizens did get AT and T to withdraw that application. So whether you know whether that will happen in this case, but um, and a week from tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a conservation commission here on the tower. Right. So I expect many of the same people will come. All right. Um, Tuesday at our Frontier School Committee meeting. Um, Thursday was uh, the floodplain meeting, public hearing. Oh, I missed that one. And um, Actually, the, the DCR representative was very helpful in that one. So that, I was glad I went to that. But did he also hear the planning board does complimenting the owl set up and they liked the, they liked the owl. They, so that was good. That was good. Got a thumbs up for the owl. <laughs> So, in public comments, well, this is new business. Well, first one we know we can do is the um, the request from Chris Curtis of the. Well, Allison's here. If you want oh, Allison is here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Recently, <laughs> sorry. Um, it's, so. On the agenda is a discussion and vote on the memorandum of understanding for regional energy planning assistance, um, which will not cost the town any out of pocket. This is Sorry, I'm just looking at the weather and thinking maybe we should tell people if they're on that in case of the electricity goes out. Oops. Well, the thunderstorm rolling through. It's just coming through now. It's, it's supposed to reach Conway at seven o'clock, according to weather.com. Okay. Got but, it. And Greenfield, I don't know if you're from Greenfield so, now. Still, so I'm, I'm little, home in Northampton now. So but we'll I'm, ignore what our eyes are telling us right out the window <laughs> right, yeah. because weather.com says <laughs> seven o'clock. Just don't look. Um, so, uh, you, do you want to tell us why we want to do this regional energy planning assistance and? Um, do you do you know what we what what we had execute what we, we had done something in 2012 I, I think I saw and so, so and, and do you do you know do, I mean you don't have to know I mean that's a 
a while ago before you were. Yeah, that was that was before my time at the FERCOG. So I assume it was something similar, but basically the MOU is for the FERCOG to provide technical assistance to support your green communities program. Um, so the DOER provides funding to us to help towns in Franklin County so that it, it'll allow us to help you fill out your annual report, um, join, add the frontier school to your energy reduction plan if that's of, of interest and apply for a green communities competitive grant. Um, so the, the MOU is just stating that the FERCOG will provide that assistance and it'll cost nothing to the town. It's all funded by the DOER. We'll be um, stepping in and acting as our energy committee kind of do, doing the kind of work they would normally do yeah yeah so i can provide as much or as little assistance as possible in this case it sounds like you know i'll be doing a lot of the work on the annual report and if um the select board has ideas about energy projects you'd like to pursue i can put together if if we receive funding i could put together a competitive grant application for you um i know veronique was uh, pulled your energy reduction plan back from 2012. So there might be some projects that we could take a look at and try and get an audit done before the fall. Um, so we can move an application. When would we need to tell you? Um, so my request for funding is due this Friday, the 20th. So the I would have to have a signed MOU by Friday. Lucky for you, it's right before it's all printed out, ready to sign. <laughs> Great. Um, do you have any other? We need to have list there the projects that we would like to see Conway do, or when is nope. that do? Nope, it's just the, I put on all four, three or four, I can't remember, They're in the scope of work, it lists out the tasks that we can get funding for. Um, I yeah. think I put in all of the eligible tasks. So it's just me sending a request to the DOR saying Conway would like to pursue these activities. We'll see what we get funding for. Um, but no, you don't have to commit to a specific project. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I know the, the one thing that we're, we're, we're beginning to work on is the um, a new public safety building, which is in the former town garage. Right okay. Along the river, right along the river across from Wesco. Okay. Um, and that that I that I imagine could do with some insulation and some just general uh, energy things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, we could definitely work on that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, all right. So, anybody else have any questions? Do it. All right, and this lasts for how many years, or this is just this year? It would just be through May 2023, and then hopefully we'll have another opportunity to apply for funding, so then we'll just go through this process again. Yeah. So they normally do a two-year contract with us. But, you know, we haven't had the energy information inputted since 2018. So if Allison can help us get up to date, <laughs> that would be huge. Yes, thank you, Allison. Yeah, no problem. We're cleaning up Conway's mess. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here. Good, good. All right. So we'll we'll get that out to you. We'll sign it apparently. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much. We move to sign the uh, FERCOG memorandum of understanding between MO, yes. FERCOG and the Town of Conway for Regional Energy Planning Assistance. All in favor. Uh, oh. Second, great. I heard a second. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Very good. Thanks. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good, night. good luck Thanks with so the storm. Thanks. You too. I guess there's people, there might be someone watching this. I guess the sound of someone signing the document isn't very <laughs> telegenic. Um, so the next next on the agenda, do do you feel river study? No. Okay. Um, so the Deerfield River Watershed Association in cooperation with several other groups is, has a bill that was introduced in Congress. 
Um, that would, that for the National Park Service to fund and conduct a study in close consultation and partnership with property owners, local and state governments with a stake in the future of the Deerfield River um, as to whether the portions of the Deerfield River should be um, designated National Wild and Scenic River under the National Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. Um, and by, by saying, go ahead and do a study, it doesn't obligate the town in any way. There's no impact on anybody's private or public property or taxes in any way. Um, <clears throat> if it actually is eventually accepted as a wild and scenic river, each wild and scenic river in the United States currently receives about 220,000 per year in grants and federal financial assistance. Um, technical assistance for, to keep it wild or to do wild? for individuals, communities, and organizations to help support river stewardship. Um, everything from riverfront road and bridge projects to improvement of fish habitat, water quality assessments, and plant and wildlife inventories and improvements. Um, so I remember when they came before the select board. And I remember thinking at the time, boy, I hope this doesn't impact anybody's private property rights. And, um, and then when I saw this again, that was my first thought again. And I hadn't remembered that that was my thought before. But I am consistent. So that's good. Um, so anybody have any thoughts about supporting the study? I'm not to support a study, and I can't well, imagine that it's going to force us to do much we would have thought. Yes. Yes. So, motion to support this, the study for to determine the, the, the bill HR. It's not the yeah, second, it's, it's a draft. Yeah. The bill in the 117th Congress first session. Second. Um, to amend the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act to direct the Secretary of the Interior to conduct a study of the Deerfield River for potential addition to the National Wild and Scenic River systems. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two members. Next is I that I think. That's what I think. You're here for, for the opens for the pollinator, the good digging in the town common plants? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> I think you'd be here to announce it on May 24th. As you start painting the Summer Falls Road. I that's love the, the sign that you have up warning that, people that it's going to happen. That's on this. For the moment, that's the I love the. While well, everyone's sitting down, though, we could, we could talk about the fact that the uh, the Buckland end of that road is actually passable now. It's you know it's not finished, but and and they're going to be doing some more digging and putting in more water underground water, and you know the project's got a ways to go. But that the, the worst of it is over. You don't threaten your car by driving the Buckland. Just something about it. I was I literally just went that road like an hour. Ago. Yeah, <laughs> pretty bad at the bottom of the road, but. It, so joining us, Janet and Kendall from the Open Space Committee and Pollinator Conway people. Person. People. Yes, people. And I think Cynthia might come. Okay. And I was hoping Grant Angle would also come uh, because Grant had chaired the Streetscape Committee way back. And I know he's talked to you. 
and Anna Whitney still has a blue blueprint from that project. He did say a set of them were given to the town. The most rare but grant. I think they're in the vault. They're in the vault. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was very, very good about sort of the systems and the process. So that's a little bit what we want to talk about um, for some for these town open spaces. And uh, and then some specifics about what are and where we are with the project so far. So any, uh, okay, so we last met with you and you had approved the, 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 the and you all had approved the planting plan that we had for outside of the town office. And then we learned later from Ron, you know, what we knew before about the plan to replace the rock board. Mm -hmm. And therefore this was not a good time to do anything over there. So we're, we're still hoping that that will get done in time for some, perhaps fall planting or, or something. Um, but along the way in this process, uh, so we, we determined water for watering any new plants is critical. So the ladies here have spent, and Ron too, has spent a bunch of time um, checking on water options. They're getting um, watered right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very so grateful for that. Um, and, but in the meantime, we've been looking at the library island with uh, whatever we should have a common name. So what is that? Is the town common? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the island in the middle with the Christmas tree. Yes. The Christmas tree island. Um, which probably needs another name. And we did a couple weeks ago, they, we spent hours uh, pruning mostly the shrubs that were there that have been overgrown and cleaning that out. Um, and uh, and they came up with with the design of a bunch of native perennials for around the, the island, the sort of island. To the goal is to replace that catnip that it's a little overgrown at the top, and then there is some consideration about the bottom tier, but I think it's been decided we didn't need to lean on that during the festival. So yeah, I think that wall is used and needs to stay open. And also, um, I was told by Grant Eagle one of the reasons that wall was put in in the first place was to protect the fir tree from the salt from snow maintenance. And so, last thing we should do is put in a lot of perennials right there. It's pretty close to the wall. So. So, so anyway, I always so, like too that that's where all the pumpkins exactly yeah, the pumpkins, the pumpkins, the pumpkins, pumpkins and, go there. and it's fun to walk on that and and, and, and the, yeah and the fall color and looking good, good for the festivals good. okay so but the bench, uh, but the bench. Um, and uh, but still we need sort of resolution and availability and commitment for safely providing water to select people who are approved to turn on the various little faucets that we have to connect. So, because uh, well, they I'm don't- I'm still working on trying to find the keys <laughs> for the outlet. So there is a water outlet. In, in the in island. 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 Um, but I can't find the keys. So I've been talking to Kenny, the plumber, and he's <laughs> going to look and see if he's got keys to fit it. It's a faucet that's locked. It's because it's an underground faucet. They have special keys to turn them on and off, so people can't just go and turn them on and walk away. Um, so I'm working somewhere. We should be able to find a key for it. But I don't think they're anything super special. It's just a matter of finding one. Or getting a replacement. You get a replacement, or are they are they like no? They're in the ground. I know, but no, it's just so a, a special to tool to turn it on and off. And if that happens, the grant is on uh, mine now. Oh, good. And if it happened during the streetscape, which I assume it did, perhaps you might have specs for that, which might make it easier to find a replacement key. 
Yeah, it's just a tool yeah. that you need to turn it on. Like a big Allen wrench kind of thing or something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. My husband probably has one in his shop. Does <laughs> everything. Hang on the wall in there. Mobile, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's potential. And then we hope that the water line still works. I mean, there's no reason. No reason. Well, so, Ronald, so you're saying this is a job that you guys would do if you could find the key. I mean, I thought Janice was looking for somebody who would actually no. be responsible for regular water. No, that's not. That's not no. the highway department. That's not. No, that, no, that no, is, no. That's the whole purpose. So, that's okay, why, that's, okay, that's what that's, I'm that's why Janet's here to tell us what, okay. the, what the alternatives what, are what besides the, the highway department. Okay, yes. So, so we have, there was notice in the visitor. I mean, we've got three dedicated people here. And um, at least two or three more have volunteered. And they're working like on a schedule of watering. You want to talk about that? That it, it, it certainly would work for this season if we got anything in the ground. Right. The, the design and the installation is the fun part, and the maintenance is the critical part to, to mm -hmm. have it be sustainable. Um, and so, <laughs> how's that going to happen? And in the first season, I'm sure we can handle it. And for that first plan that was outside of the town offices, that was a huge project. This seems more doable, especially above the wall. And I have no problem just taking my turn doing that. So you're talking about long term? Yes. Yeah, so we have so we have an immediate, you know, plan for this summer and fall. Mm -hmm. uh, if it provides when we get the water and depending on the timing of what plants are available, we've got the budget, we've got the commitment from the open space committee to provide funding. Plus, we already have some commitments of donations of plants. Okay, so then, then we've got it in the ground and the water works is the, 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 the safe, reasonable method to turn on when needed. Um, for the future, future long-term maintenance, we calculated it would cost between around $700 to, if in the future for like next year or, or beyond for to hire um, to hire a person at about at twenty dollars an hour for the length of time that would be needed to take care a couple of hours a week, one and a half or something like that, to take care of these established beds once they're in, and we think that's a small price to pay for having an ongoing plan um, to make the town center look good and do our educational purposes with the native plants. Um, this would be under the, uh, could be, should you ratify, under the auspicious of the Open Space Committee and basically from our budget. Um, uh, it, it would have to be, the supervision would be delegated to one of, to an experienced gardener in town and they would be responsible for you know signing the time sheets or the payment forms or whatever that the work has been done satisfactorily and of course there would always be some coordination with the highway department um for you know just as we did when i told you something needed some chainsawing you know for kind of major major um you know issues or uh so that generally, generally, with an outline of a future, and, and it's not possible to do it with drip hoses and uh, a timer, you, you, um, and have it turn on for an hour a day or something. I don't know. No, that uh -huh. faucet needs to go on and off as you need it, because if it gets something happens, and the water comes on or stays on. The water comes from this building, and if we lose the water in this building, you're going to have a lot bigger problems. Plus, it also supplies the library. Uh -huh. okay. So that water needs to be somebody needs to be there when it's on. I mean, the only thing about drip hoses is they don't spray water out in large volume. They 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 have a lot of back pressure against the the hose. Well, I understand what you're saying, but who knows if something happened to the hose and it just started spewing out and then. We end up with a huge problem, yeah, for the town building or the library because of the water. I have no idea what kind of well we have for this place, you know, what, what it's good for. And we certainly don't want to be drilling another well. 
So you can go seven hundred dollars a year, and you could. And it's not just watering; it's the weeding. It's just oh, all oh, that's everything. Okay. And keeping it Great. looking, you know, native plants can get sprawly. We have to be really careful what we choose, and that there's a succession of plantings, and so that there's always something in bloom. And so you want to keep that looking good, so that people are supported and want to do the same thing now at their own place. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll have a, a summer of rain like we did last year. Then, uh, this is going to be summer of no rain, I think. Yeah. Maybe not today, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just don't know. Yeah. Um, so did, did, have they talked about like the scale of the planting? Like, what's the um, the final height of the plantings and whatnot? And yeah, I don't. They, think they need to see like traffic on the other side or whatever. I don't. I don't know if they're right. to it's, see traffic like. It's a, right. It could be a huge issue as to what gets planted. Right. We're still talking about that. Where something was specked that was. I felt too tall and would need staking, and I just don't. I think we need to be really careful about what's planted so that it's as low maintenance as possible. Because native plantings can be, can really take care of themselves in the long term and not need watering every year. That's the idea. The first year they need water. But um, I think we need to be super careful. And then there was some talk of making sure there are plantings that are uh, blooming during the festival. Like asters and golden rods and so forth. I don't know how detailed you want to get right now, but this isn't a final plan, and I'm, really, and I'm pretty sure this is just going to go because it makes no sense to plant that close to the road where the salt will hit it. And then, is, do we talk about the bench? Uh, well, let's finish okay. answering this. So the, the other thing is, um, um, the, the they don't want the mowing to be made more difficult. Right. That's fair. So the, the, there's an existing bed there now, or just one species, and the idea might be to to deepen it just a little, but to stay out of your way so that we create an edge, uh, a nice edging that you could just more put one um, tire in and <laughs> steer it there. Um, and also, I keep bringing up the bench, but that needs to go. Or, or excuse me, that's not disrespectful, but it just needs to be moved because it's too close to that fir tree. It's pretty sad you sit in it to look at the trees right there but we have some thoughts about just moving it um talking to the family first that it's honoring and and potentially moving it across the across the um street into the veterans park so that i mean yeah you're no i don't i don't know i'm sure i i, I, <laughs> I just, mean the idea is that the family wanted that to be able to do that through that tree that they decorated every year yeah, well, that's a lot of meaning, and it should still be used. It's just so we we had been in contact with I think Joe Stragowski and some other people who were Grant and Grant about the donors of that of uh, the existing fence, the the four, four years four, in our four honor years. Four, four, four years, years. Four, 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 in honor of them, um, and but we don't know exactly when it was put there. And, and it has to, it, it, there's no room over yeah. there on the current it's tiny. area. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Really the tree has grown. Yeah. And, um, I, I think we should be very are. careful what we put in the veterans park. Okay. Well, we have a bench here. We could have a companion bench. We could have a big companion. So, but I think the intent of the, from what I was told, and I don't know, I don't know when the bench got put there, but was because of the treatment there. Time that they spent with the for the tree, yeah, you know, all the years of taking care of the lighting and all right. that, and that was the point. That's why the bench is facing the tree, right? So, one but, idea wasn't to add it to the circle of benches in the, in the memorial, but rather to have it in a diagonal, um. Looking at the tree and being able to see the library as well. Be a nice, nice view of town, but that, that's what we can address later. Uh, so, just Grant, are you there? Muted? Is he muted? He's not muted. All right. Well, Grant, I'm sure you'll join in with your some observations. Can, um, can I just ask a question? Because I mean, logistically. I mean, I, I, I wonder whether we could actually hire a person willing to take on a job that's going to pay $700 in the course of the summer. Um, that just seems like kind of a stretch to me. Um, is, there, is there an issue with having 
does that affect our town liability? I mean, would this person be an employee of the town? Does that affect our insurance? Does that affect liability? And to have this person reporting to a skilled gardener, I mean, would this employee have to report to someone yeah, in town? As this was to... the first I'd heard of this plan up until now. I thought it was going to be these groups taking care of it as volunteers themselves. Okay, so yeah, that's... this is new to me. This, this would be a consultant. It is very common in gardening. Okay, so this would be a consultant work. paid out of. Okay, all right. Yes, it is. Um, and uh, $700 is a low, a low ball estimate based right now on $20 an hour. We don't know when this is going to chip in or really, you know, the level or who. Okay. You know, would so when we say hiring someone, really do your it. committee will pay a consultant to. Yes, okay. yes. I mean, we have a consultant on contract for, for another reason, as the town okay. has many of those. Um, so. Grant, can you hear us? I can. Okay, good. Yeah, we, we, we're in short. Thank you. Um, so, so that thus far is, you know, the pro potential proposal for this island, and and if we get the go or when the when the um, town office is available, you know, we would consult on the root, the size roots of of the small tree in the front with Ron, so that's acceptable in location and. When the you know water access is known and we have a key there also for the same kind of watering, I think this process could work for that. Well, what also. I would really like to see is um, if you do something in the Christmas the tree common mm -hmm. for this year, and let's see how that goes before we move to in front of the um, town hall town office only because. Let's see how this process is moving as far as what you're planting, what how how the plants are. Well, uh, you know, I think we should take a look at getting the, the walkway done and certainly the potential to put a small tree there uh, this fall while they're available. And, you know, I hear you, you want to test us all out, you know, just as, as well, you know, my, we my fear is tested. that what's happened in the past where you have these groups that come in and do things and then they go away and then i'm left with trying to clean up the mess not understanding what has gone on and then people get mad because i try to do something to make clean it up and i'm just trying to make sure that we keep everything you know so that that doesn't happen again um, all right, well, I think this is something to continue to be discussed. Um, but like I said, I mean, I, I, I'm yeah, willing to let you know. No, I hear that. You know, I, you know we common. have a plan in writing, and I'm sorry, you know what? Uh, uh, I don't know, you know, how long and, you know, what your criteria, but I, I don't believe we should have the sole veto power. I'm sorry. Um, uh, let's. Um, well, I disagree with that. Well, because I have to take care of all the properties. Okay, and, and the and the public gets some input on that, you know, in terms of what's planted and what. But yeah, the main thing you want. wanted was the tree. The, yeah, in, in front of the town rock. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there are a lot of people are very concerned about the trees here and the appearance of downtown and the fact that it's. But that common over there, there is nothing nice about that common at all. It's a flowering tree. Let's not do that. The flowering trees. I'm just saying, and spring. it is a it's a real problem to maintain that little island, that common over there, because things are so out overgrown over there. The one that we just pruned. Yeah. That island. You still it, think they're over overgrown? Well, it's not. It, it's not something for somebody to take care of the place mowing it. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, yeah, okay. It costs money. Every everything that we do that makes it harder for the person that's mowing costs the town money. And believe me, this year the mowing is crazy money. I mean, you got the high fuel cost. Nobody knows where it's going, and we got all these things that they have to work around because everybody has different views on what's nice and what isn't. And so I I need to keep it to some kind of level that 
works for not having to spend all this time for taking care of these properties. Okay. You do have the south metal down there that you could do plantings in and you know show the town. I mean, you, you have the open it looks space. like there's hundreds of trees that are about to get planted. There, there are hundreds, so. of, you know. Can maybe you can talk way in on the demonstration aspect and the and the the, the beauty or lack thereof of the town center, you know, as opposed to the meadow. Right, they are two very different things. Well, I understand that, but you're looking to establish something. Why not do something down there to show people what you're capable of producing? Mm -hmm. I mean, just because it's not in the center. Main Street doesn't mean you've got plenty of visitors down in the middle of it. Probably not as many as drive by the. I understand that, but time. promote yourself. <laughs> promote the um, you know, your space down there to start with. I mean, if it's very and actually, they're doing a lot down there. Though. They're, yeah, uh, there's a lot going on that they're actually doing. Uh, uh, you know, and everything. And nobody else here yeah. could. You know, one of the reasons for this was. The feeling that was expressed mm -hmm. that the, the town center is doesn't look very good, and so that's a part of this. Let me just say, Ron, I do hear and understand your concerns about the maintenance with this edge, a, a firm edge that would be uh, created. Um, it, it wouldn't be any more mowing or any more difficult. I'm not. I'm not saying anything about what you propose from there. Yeah, but I'm just saying specifically what we're proposing here isn't going to create any more mowing headaches or cost. The question. I just we were down here the other day and I noticed that well actually somebody else pointed out to me that the grass doesn't grow very well around and under the tree because of the tree, of course. So I didn't know because I haven't seen any of your plans that you might have taken into consideration doing something low growing that would be an alternative to lawn so that we wouldn't even have to mow. That would be amazing, I'm sure. Yeah, we talked about that. I don't know how much mowing it actually goes on underneath the tree. Not under, but you know, it, it's killing all the grass all around. If you look around, shrubs, yeah. around those mm -hmm. huge shrubs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think the idea is that at the meadow, it's all naturalized. And while these would be native plants, it's more of a demonstration of what could be done in a person's part, you know, instead of just having ornamentals. I, under, I, I totally get what you're doing. My thought was if you started out with a small. Like this. But somewhere where it's not, we, I, people can actually see what happens as it grows. I guess that's what we thought we were doing. Here? Right there. Yeah, yeah, right here. I'm fine. I'm fine with you guys doing it there. Ron, I thought you were saying, why don't we hold off on doing something big in front of the town office? Yeah, too. I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's not, my, not, not affecting this. Right. We're, we're talking about this, but yeah, yeah. we're thinking. That was my feeling when I joined. Yeah, uh, on, when I came on board and saw the plan for in front of town offices, I thought it was a lot. It was, Stunning and it would be exciting, but it's a lot of a big, too big to start. And we just need to start here and see what it's like to maintain I'm that. I'm fine with just one step at a time. Okay. Right. I'm fine with that common there. I'm not fine with in front of the town office at this point. And especially since that ramp is that, that ramp has been replaced. Right. So it's the, the timing seems the flip side of that though is that trees generally, most trees, a lot of trees do better if you transplant them in the fall. So it's quite similar to here. So uh, let's, I mean, let, let's 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 uh, review this uh, later in the summer. How about that? I just wanted to ask one more question. So you had mentioned seven hundred dollars for the consultant to come in, and that would be to take care of the town common plan that you have, correct? Yes. And yes. Would that be the ongoing annual expense yes. that comes out of open space? Yes. Okay. That would be in the future if volunteers are insufficient. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The garden club okay. warned us. Do you plan well, and the installation? That's all great. And that's when all the energy is there. But then 
just the maintenance is so important. Okay. And you know, we don't, right. we don't want to that's, that's where my issue is. So you're yes. just I mean, letting the town want... know that you're committing that if you can't have volunteers to take care of it, it will come out of open space annually to pay for the cost of maintenance. Yes. You'll add that money to the budget. It's not going to magically appear there. No, uh, she, I believe she did say it would not. Well, we, we have it now. You know, some of it depends on how much mowing costs go up. You know, but we, we have it right now with the existing with the existing great okay funds, which is which are not large, but yes, we do. Okay. Um we did want to um inquire what your plans are for the, the memorial common and, and any plantings and several citizens want to weigh in on additional re or replacement plantings and have suggestions on scale. You know, we don't, we don't obviously we don't want any more big pine trees anymore, but there are lots of options mm -hmm. and we want it to be part of that process. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, maybe there's no water there, though, right? Hmm? There's no water there. There's no water on yeah. that. Um, oh, there's a suggestions for time. Yeah, but there's um, water to take on this building, right? Has this big yes. with a key working on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're so, but a hose could run across this road, just not across 116. Not, not legally, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a no, no, use your water bill. I don't know how they did it in the past. That's what we need to grant. <laughs> We don't know. No, is Grant well, still there? Neighbors where you live. Yeah. Doc. <laughs> Grant left. Those are, Wait, no, I'm still here. Oh, here. Grant, Grant, when the streetscape was done and uh, that included the planting in the memorial, uh, Veterans Memorial? You mean the Veterans Park? Veterans Park. So that was part of it. And the plantings, and, and were they watered when they were put in? Yes, from a hose from the town hall. It's done by the when they were planted or on a regular basis? And not on a regular, I mean, uh, when they were initially planted and the contractor came back and watered them several times. With a hose that he, he probably attached to the town hall. Exactly. Exactly. Good thing Ken's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Very few times. Very few times. <laughs> Virtually, no. <laughs> well, maybe that's why they fell down. I love my holes. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're, I don't know, succulents sound good. We do have. Yeah, you're escaping. Really? Yeah. 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 Do you, have you do have water trucks in town. Oh. You know, fire trucks. Oh, those. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're a resource. Yeah. It's a better option to run holes across. Yeah. The yeah. Well, they have to drain those trucks now. Uh, you know, if they're trees, you can get those gator bags. We, we, we can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's go back to the bench, uh, the little bench in the um, 40 year, the bench dedicated to the 40 year grant that is in the Christmas tree common. Do you have any suggestions for how that's handled and where it goes? My concern would be that it not be put in Veterans Park. I, and I also have concerns about the rebuilding of those existing benches, which all match each other. I uh, got the original design specs uh, and sent them to Veronique. Yes, they're getting put back together. They just got moved to the, for the tree removal. But one of them is broken, is that right? That will get repaired, okay. So okay, that's reassuring. And will they be, uh, then Ronnie, maybe you want to see those specs that Veronique has because they talk about how they are vandal proof uh, with stainless steel brackets. Oh, well, I don't think they got put in. <laughs> I, I would think that with the bench, um, the first step would be to contact the four years to be frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Penny, did George offer to contact them first? Out of courtesy? No, we should try point? to suggest another place for because she knows them. Okay, we will we will try to follow up on that. So do you have any specific plans yet for 
uh, you're just working on fixing the benches and, and any other. We're surrounding... going to be cleaning that area up and redoing the, the fence. Probably won't that probably won't be going on until after July. Um, after new budget money to do the fence, you, you know, redo the fence over there. And then after that, the something to be a barrier between like what the trees were there. You know, I was thinking maybe something like arbor lights or something that was small but easy to maintain. You know, a pretty good break. But but they can get really big. I've seen dwarf arbor bites that don't get really big. Yeah. It's, deer, it's deer candy, mm -hmm. and they just eat around the the base, and then you end up. Have you seen those? They mm -hmm. look like weird little mm -hmm. they're oh, wow. empty at the bottom. But I know what you mean about screening. But right, I mean it's it's a parking lot there. Yeah, so much. Some, some, some of our varieties are near. Mm. They don't. Bother. How do they do that? There's, there's certain species of other varieties they, that are that are near to the mountain. Wow. So well, that's what they said about you, though. And we yeah, planted yeah. up and we planted them, and the deer feasted on them. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe we can put our heads together and come up with those species that's native. Yeah. You know, well, I don't have any. I, something. You're just a screening. A screening, but it's something that isn't a lot of maintenance. And doesn't get huge. Right. Yeah. It's um, more sprawling than tall. I mean, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because when I'm a Forsythia, they sprawl anyway. No, okay. It's also not a maintenance. Is that right? They spread all over the place. Yeah, yeah. See, that's not something okay. we're looking for. <laughs> well, maybe we can, you know, we'll go forward with what yeah. we can go forward with and maybe have some private discussions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. And then um, um, uh, now uh, we are, as I sent notice that, about this other tree planting over in the meadow. And Ron, I've been meaning to ask you that little building that the town owns, the um, shed mm -hmm. over there, there's an old vehicle in it. We've talked to the fire department about that. Oh, the okay. restaurant. Department. That little Jeep so, that doesn't hasn't moved in years. Oh, it did. A few years ago, because they took the motor out of it. It's a parks truck. It's a parks truck for the fire department. Okay. Um, for for these tree planting in the meadow, there's going to be ongoing um, maintenance, watering. Um, you know, and this grant is funding that uh, to 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 water water them as long as they need it. And you know, they're all going to be have protectors. So. Of some kind, and there may be some need to store some supplies, some whatever supplies. So we could find a little room in that corner. Okay. Downstairs, you mean? Building. Underneath? Yeah. yeah. Well, eventually, because the highway department does have a bunch of signs and stuff down there. Yes. I haven't had time. Right. But <laughs> now that with your new building, I right. you don't have more rooms. Okay. Yes. Right. So when are you planning on doing the planting? The plan uh, planting is on, on Saturday. It won't be cleaned out by then. No. Well, um, I don't know if you wanted to talk to the fire department about pulling the truck out. Uh, sure. The, the parks truck. Hmm. Okay. Well, well, you know, yeah. we'll see what we I guess is they're fond of their parks truck. So yeah. squeeze don't around, want to part with it. Squeeze around there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it there to begin with. So uh, okay. But I don't know. Um they got this on. Well, while we were all here, we had another item that we just a lot of people are curious about the status of the of the tree cutting along the town roads and where the tree warden's authority ends and begins and, and what the status of that is. Curious. So, uh, um, we 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 do have a tree warden. Um, we know that. And Walter Walter is, um, you know, he does a lot for the town. That the, the there is 
um, you know, I, I, some people have uh, communicated their belief that we should be doing the tree warden position differently or more intensely than it is currently. That 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 there is um, that that trees that are being cut that, that that what the town has always deemed to be someone else's private property can in fact be deemed to be public shade trees that the town has jurisdiction over or something and um, and that's, yeah I didn't study for this particular thing so it's, this is something I read like a month ago now so um, but the. The, um, and, and and whether or not the, 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 the you know and if it is shade trees then there would be public hearings for any trees that are going to be cut there would that would be have to be posted quite specifically in the local newspaper in advance and um, uh, and I think that there's more than one meeting that is required for and it's just um, I, and I know that there are city you know I know that the city of Greenfield does has shade tree hearings like every week um, during the summertime. So there are towns that do that, but we have never done it that. And Can what, I explain why? The, so the public, the public road versus um, versus a road not being owned by the town, and and, and that so and so, so this is the, we the, have we only have easements right away which means that the land is still owned by the property owner. And the way I've been dealing with the trees is I deal with the property owner and they get permission from them to take down their tree when it's an issue for the town or we're trimming, trying to, we have to look way down in the future for our tree trimming because we have so many roads miles of road that we have to maintain that we can't just do limited amount of trimming and we do something because two years later it'll be back and we can't be back in two years. I mean even at trying to do a 10 year rotation doesn't work. There isn't enough time to do tree trimming. When we got roads that are just about every road in Conway is terrible with trees. And fortunately right now we have having a little help from the power company because um, they're doing some pretty good tree trimming for us. But it's not, it's not for the appearance of the roads that we're doing. It's for all the other factors of safety. We have, this town probably has well, it has a large population of bicyclists riding bicycles, people walking. And when you have the limbs and branches that are hanging down in the road that cut the visibility of cars that are probably traveling too fast in the first place, it becomes a huge issue. So we try to make it take when we do the trimming. We try to make it so that it's beneficial for the people walking and bicycling, but also for our roads. The roads need the sun. Um, there's no other way to put it. I, if you drive around and look at the bad section of road, look where it is. It's in the shaded areas. Um, and it's Shelburne Fall Road is a prime example. Of that. Yes, it is. And it's it's so costly now for maintaining a, a road that tree trimming is kind of like a low budget item in a way to protect that investment. I mean, all the all the mass DOT engineers tell you that the best thing you can do for your roads. The longevity is to let the sun hit the dry. It's very clear. I mean, that's why they did 116. You know, with the cost of maintenance of when hard surface roads, like Ron said, that's the best budget, best bang for the buck. And there, there, you know, I think part of it too is that um, I think we were searching for sort of 
documented proof that that um, you know that that the town doesn't own roads. That 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 because the research that has been done was by a private resident and um, and I don't know whether there's documentation to that effect or not or or you know. What do you mean, private resident? That it, um, well, he was a licensed surveyor, licensed in Massachusetts. I mean, he knew the law. I mean, then I gave Barony some paperwork that that came out of a um, law book, the black black laws or something. It was uh, case laws for in Massachusetts. And we'll be reviewing that. So yeah. I understood you. So we are we are reviewing that in the next town council conference. Call and well. that Walter resigned or is resigning? No, I hope not. Don't give me any ideas. Um, well, hope not. But he's a valuable person. Absolutely. Um, but but you know if if I, I I know that he would not look favorably upon being told that he whenever there's a tree that needs to be cut, he has to do a public hearing and he's the one that's responsible for getting the ads in the paper at the right day and the right time, scheduling everything because of that. Actually, there is the shade tree law states that if the tree is a threat to public safety, there is no hearing needed. Doesn't matter what the tree is. I'm wondering if um, there's a possibility of, instead of having the roads, responsible for cutting trees though if there could be like some professional that we sub that out to um you well, know and what's the a lot of cutting that's being done so i think someone um susan fenton made a suggestion during public comment period at a previous meeting that if we do cutting in the future we consult an arborist which ron was amenable to. But Walter's an arborist. Yes. So, okay, well, then. well he's, he told me that he's not an arborist. I, I spoke with him. He said he's, I forget what he said he did, but he's not an arborist. Tree trimming. Well, so how much, <laughs> how much money are we getting involved yeah. in here to maintain our roads? I mean, money. you know, every time I turn around, there's you got if people want somebody special doing something, and it's be, I don't have a budget that even comes close to what I need to take care of our roads, but to have our roads in reasonable shape. I mean, Chapter 90 money gives me some, but other than that, my budget, I don't have money to. Um, Do the things that need to be done. I mean, and we start adding these kind of things into it. You don't get enough chapter 90 money to repave the road. No, I don't. <laughs> and I don't have any money in my regular budget to pay for it. Chapter yeah. 90 right. has been flat for 12 years. Right. 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 No, it's actually gone down. Chapter 90 years. But I stand for it. <laughs> it's very difficult. When all of a sudden we got to start adding these professionals that aren't cheap to do things to maintain our roads. If people love trees so much, I'm sorry, plant them on your property and maintain them on your property <laughs> so the town doesn't have to maintain them. And how far back from the road do they have? That depends on the road because every road is different. It depends on the tree too. <laughs> I mean, I, I get, I totally get that people love their trees and, you know, their well, nice side of the road and all that. It's not just that though. It's also that tree cutting is a skill and an expertise and, you know, people are trained to do it. They, they have education to do it and it's, and it's not, I mean, anybody can get out there with a chainsaw and, and, you know, take a tree down, but that doesn't mean that, you know, that's the way a tree should be cut down. 
So, so when you cut a tree down, there's certain ways that you do it to for what purpose other than cutting it down? So well, it looks better. It, You're talking about pruning the tree. I'm talking not about pruning, pruning, I'm sorry. but there's right, right, right. a lot of pruning that's going on, not just cutting the trees down. So, you know, the trees that are left, the, the parts of the trees that are left need to be, you know, you, you don't want to cut a tree in such a way that it's going to be unhealthy or have unhealthy parts that lead to rot and things like that, which is it is going to kind of negate the whole purpose of pruning it to make the road safer. So, you know, it, it's a good idea to at least get training for the people that are doing I'm the training. The person that we have on the highway department is a pretty highly trained person, um, tree cutting person. He's been his father is a father in law is a big tree guy. What, what, um, what, which, which employee is that? Jason. Sloan. He's the one that does our tree cutting. Um, well, I mean, I'm not saying he knows everything. Yeah, there's know? there's some cuts that I would take issue with that have been done on some of the trees that uh, I've I'm not, seen. I'm not going to dispute that there's, I'm sure that there's, people can find fault with anything anybody does. I've seen cuts from what the Eversource has their tree companies do that are way oh, worse yeah. than yeah. what we do. We also have to be, when we're dealing with the landowner, there's certain things that they want that we, when we're doing it, that we try to accommodate them. Yeah. You? I, I think it's okay that people want their town to look nice. It is. It's a good thing. And yeah. it's okay that people want to volunteer to do stuff and want to try to help with that, so I that people can do. That. Do you have Plants any? Plants always you? make look better. Trees always make things look better. But they have to be healthy. If they're not Unfortunately, healthy. Unfortunately, we don't have many healthy trees along the side of the road. Mm -hmm. You can drive on any road in this town and there's a lot of bad trees. Why, so why is that? Trees. Why is that? Because of all the things that are going on, the diseases that are hitting the roads. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yes, I'm not going to dispute that, but it's not the only thing. I mean, it's, there's bugs in trees that are killing a lot of different trees. It's not the road salt. Yeah, well, we also have trees that are way too close to the road Correct. that are beautiful like the oak trees up along Wheaton Road that are like right next to the cave. The road got too big. And and it's really hard for them to plow because those trees are in the way. So they you know they there are situations like that where you don't really want to cut the whole tree down because it's an amazing tree. There's a bunch of trees there that are just beautiful trees and obviously they're being preserved even though they're right next to the cave. So you know there's a number of problems, but I think it would be good to you know maybe have more of a process about where it's going to be cut and so people know that areas are being cut. So people like I had I live on Warren Grove Road and there were a bunch of trees that my neighbor on his land grew being cut, but they're, you know, it was problematic for us. For so if he went reasons. over and he just, if they're his trees, he went over and started cutting them down, you would have a problem with that? Yes. Well, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. He would have talked to us about it. And, and so how come he didn't talk to you before he, I talked He to regretted him. that he didn't, you know, afterwards because, because you know, it wasn't just us. It was like our but, whole neighborhood was like. So, all right. So that one instance where he didn't, um, he regretted not what we did. Huh? Yeah, not communicate. Yeah, just if you talked it over, you know, if we talked it over as a neighborhood, then we all could have come to an agreement of, you know, what would have been. But it's his land. Of course, of course. But, but so he, I don't understand if that person, and I'm not saying him, but anybody that has land and 
they need the neighborhood to give them permission to they don't need the neighborhood to give them permission but if you're a, if you're a neighbor and you care about what your neighbors might think or you know about something really major i mean there were a lot of trees cut and there were big trees cut and it wasn't you know it wasn't just one family it was several families that were really shocked at the amount of cutting that had gone on and also some of the things that you wished had been cut weren't cut like dead trees that were still left so because it, we got told not to cut them I'm sorry, we took what he said. Okay, fine. Uh, but, you know, I, th I you know, think. You know, I went through the whole process with the landlord. Right. And if if he had, if it was on him, if he wanted to have that neighborhood conversation. Right. And he didn't just do think about what an impact it was going to have. And, you know, now. But that's not on me. No, it's and, not. I mean, not I'm you know, not saying well, it sounds like you're suggesting that, like, you, there's the, more the process, process would be that not only do you work with the landowner, but the landowner is required to notify the abutters or something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would just like to see more, a little more thought put into, you know, the process of, you know, public streets that everyone uses for different, you know, for their daily life. And, you know, the street, the streetscape <laughs> of our wild streets is pretty much, you know, everybody in, in town is, is uh, has, we might not own most properties, but we have a little bit of, we, it would be nice to feel like we had a process as a community for talking about. So give me a lot of money so that I have time to do these it's, things. It's not so much that. It's a, even if we had lots of money, I don't, I mean, because the public part of the road and somewhere around that painted yellow line, right, as the road ends, like then it's not public anymore. Then it's someone else's land and someone else's tree. Right. It, and and it so does. like, we don't, we wouldn't really want like government to like say, you have additional requirements now. Wait, 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 wait. What we want is some. It is like it's more it, of a friendly uh, suggestion exactly. than, and, and so, than a requirement and a law and a hard, hard edge to it. So you know, how, how do you create the sense of community in your own street where people feel that that's what they would well, naturally want to do with their friends and neighbors and right. inform them of that? Right. Like rather than town government requiring. Right, 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 right. It's it's just having more community like awareness of of how you know big things that you choose to do. So could we create a document or you know something that we would hand out to people on the street? Well, you know, when, just, I mean, you know, you invite them over for dinner. Invite everybody no, over for dinner. No, it would help if we knew sort of what end no. of town you were working on or what what streets are coming up. I think that just kind of knowing that would then let people in that area right. know this Talk is, it over. and so yeah. that, you know. Yeah, if we, we had no idea that. that so do we publish in the Conway Currents, you know, where Ron is going to be doing some tree cutting? With the goals for yeah. this summer or the next, yeah, whatever. That, I mean, this is the order. You know, just so that people like that. know, and, and then if they want to like say, oh, I see that, you know, Roy, they're going to be cutting a bunch of, you know, they're thinking of, of cleaning up the, the edge of the road on your land. Well, every, every road in town is eventually going to, we're going to get mm -hmm. to it. Right. So maybe, maybe you should have informed people on your time about what the community wants to do as yes, but with the I each mean, land. What's What's approximately the time eventually? I mean, is that in 10 years when I'm in a nursing home or is it, is it two I don't years? know. You know, is it two years it, my it, things change because of what's happening with the trees. But Rod, do you have a feeling for where you're going to be needing to do some tree cutting over? Well, unfortunately, the way it works is when we have start having a lot of issues with dead trees, like drawing growth both ends, 
um, getting calls in the middle of the night to go open the road up so people can get home or get out. It's a tree. <laughs> because there's a dead tree that has fallen, or not even a dead tree, but a tree gets old after a while of having to get up and going and taking care of a tree that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, should have been taken care of during normal work hours. You know, it's just that we don't have the resources. I mean, if you look at- But um, did you, would you have had time to have put in, a, in the next issue of the Conway Currents that you were thinking of cutting the trees down along the Warren Brook Road? I mean, doing some tree cutting along the sides of the Warren Brook Road? Well, it all depends on the weather. The weather dictates what kind of work we do. This spring was, a, we had more time to work on trees this spring because of the way the weather was. We couldn't do other things. Spring didn't get here early for now. So the tree work got done. Roenbrook, the other end, the maple trees and trees on the other end by Boyden's farm. We had all kind, I had residents calling me all the time asking me to remove trees over there because they were afraid to drive from here because they Saw big so, so we could have published an article, though. I mean, if, especially if we had a regular article of where we're going to be doing this kind of work. Where there's problems. Uh, uh, and you, you, no, because that took, how long does it take to put an article? Once a month. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that once a month. It could be on a couple of sentences. Being on the it's, committee for the news that I'd just like to say that I think uh, listening to all this and getting the explanation. Um, and as Ron said, every street's going to get it eventually. It might be good to try to put together an article that explains the process as it was just explained tonight, so that people are thinking about this in their own neighborhoods. Now they understand what what happens, and we don't know necessarily exactly. I mean, because Ron can't predict. He he has an idea of what things, but something might come up over right. there, and and I don't think I, I understand. I'm not. I'm sure he doesn't want to promise something. That then doesn't happen. Not promise, is, just uh, heads up that you know. But heads right. up, it doesn't happen. Just but get, right here. If A and B and C are all on your list, but A looks like it's going to happen first, you can say, you know, I've got these three areas that are there's problem trees in these areas. There's been a lot of you know trees except, on the road and whatever. Except that you know that um, you know it's 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 the, the there's somebody that knows early on and that's the landowner that is calling about that and you know uh, that's the, the, I, I, these are the things that neighbors should be talking to neighbors about and it, it shouldn't be a town employee required to post something well, as part of the job posting, but I think just to having write something and you know one more, one, more, and one more little and which ones are the most problematic anything. which ones are like on your next kind of goal next time you were I mean, assuming nobody calls you in the middle of the night. <laughs> no, well, it's not that. that. I mean, because you, here's, a, here's a good example. Whitley Road, we basically got both ends of it trimmed up pretty easy. The section between Rowan Brook and back to the waterfall, whatever people call it, Carol Wash or whatever, that section there. I don't know if you must drive through there. How many dead trees are in there that are ready to fall? Mm -hmm. How many? Okay. There's got to be at least 50. So when you go in there and you start taking down dead trees, What's you're not going to. You're watershed not. Watershed property. Well, there's some. Watershed property. What's that? Along Road. Yeah, there's Where, a lot of it is like, watershed yeah. property. I yeah. mean, shouldn't they be doing that? <laughs> Okay, I'm all for that. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll put you in charge of uh, talking with the watershed. Ron, excuse me, could you speak to why um, uh, I, I live on one end of Reed's Bridge, that Truce Road loop, and so Eversource has come and talked to all the neighbors, and now many tree, 50 trees are, more, are targeted to be cut in the next month. So well, they put blue blue markings on them. No, it's right? a little pink <laughs> square. Oh, it depends on who's doing it. It's okay. subtle. But then, if we start looking at 
anyway, it's whatever's close to the, they wanted to do 15 feet from the road and mm -hmm. wherever the lines are. So some people said no, and some people said yes. And um, but I'm just wondering why that's covered by Eversource versus what? Because of their power lines. They're right, but uh, some of the places you're cutting those power lines too, that you just don't cut anything near the power lines, you cut- uh, Yeah, we don't, oh. we don't cut, yeah, it's I, a oh. hazard. Earlier on tonight, you mentioned you're getting some help from the power company. Is yeah. that what you meant? Yes. Okay, got yeah. it. Thank you. Um, yes, they're um, they're finding that they need to get the trees away from the power lines because of all the storms that we've been having that have been yep. causing a lot of problems with power. So we've, we've strayed off from your agenda I think, for quite a long time now. Yeah. But I know that it's important to you all. And I wanted to, have to let you have this discussion and everything. But, um, okay. We've I made think, as much, progress, we're, made as much progress as we're going but to. But there's it. no way this town will ever have money to, to take it off of your plate and have a professional company do what you can. Never. It's never going to happen. I think so. Okay. I agree. It's I good mean. to know. Okay. Dream on. I We're either the town is always just, either broke or just, badly bent, but it's really upset never plus. More than just the 116 time, because that time you can say, well, that's the state, but then this time it just felt like such a. Well, this, some I, of those I, trees I think are, it must have been painful for you to cut some of those. One of those, some of those big, big old. Maples? You mean on your own brook? Yeah. Yeah, you know, when our sugar maples are in decline. And then did they ask for them to be kind of left and Is that why they're sort of? Oh, no, they're, not, they're they... all down now. Oh. But see, and unfortunately, what happened was we cut what we could with the boomers, and then what, and then we ran out of time. And now we're trying to go back, and that'll all be cleaned up hopefully by fall time. But the trees, there's no sticks standing up over there now. Um, they're all down. All the trees. Uh, uh, well, thank you. thank you very much. Thank sorry. you all. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it didn't rain for long. That's good. Really, I don't know. <laughs> needed it. Thank you. Somebody needed You want us to leave the chairs? Sure. That band of storms has gone by us. Which you can probably tell by looking out the window. Next nomination of Michael Peebles as reserve officer for yeah. town. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's uh he's got time, he's got expertise. He's willing to do it, so I, he seems like a nice guy. So why recently he moved to Conway, or is, huh? is he a new? Recently came to Conway. Yeah, like huh? I don't know. Yes, okay, he's been here for probably twenty six years. Uh -huh. He's great. He jogs his dog every morning. I'm just going to repeat his name because I think there was some. If you want to repeat his name, because there was some noise going on. Um, it's Michael Habel. So what does that actually mean? He's a reserve officer. It's only if you just call him up and you need him. Basically, <laughs> he's going to work. He's on call. He's <laughs> when I when I ask him to do something, he'll be available. Great. <laughs> I need one of those. Is he subbing in for Randy? Is that is that, is that the opening? Mm -hmm. Well, Randall's going to work twelve hours for beginning July first. So there'll be times to be filled. Yeah. Um, Brown House will be done June thirtieth. Um, sort of getting additional bodies after that. So we're down four. We'll be down four. <laughs> but he won't require the expensive training. He has already had all that. That, that, is, that is the best of his career. He's got, uh, he still has a lot of his gear. <clears throat> oh, you keep that when you retire? Huh? You could keep your gear when you retire? Uh, he, yeah, he had a lot of it. A lot of guys find it on. Oh. Um, a lot of back in some firearms from the state when he retired. So, does he get to keep his rank? He's a retired major, that's correct. <laughs> so, that was his little tag here. We'll say major. Is major higher than no? Major's pretty, it's pretty, that's high. pretty major. That's pretty high. 
Did you get made your pay? <laughs> Did he have your yeah, out has, has, has he seen and, a pay stub yet? And his retirement. <laughs> <laughs> so he's willing to do so. So I yeah, it sounds like a great pickup. Yeah, yeah it's really fortunate. Good. Yeah. So I'm going to be back after July 1st. Uh, once his bridge academy is completed, we'll see who gets through it. Maybe some other people that are available to come away. Good recruit. We are not, we are not worthy. I don't know how you did it. Good job. I was out of the Miles Stanges State Forest this weekend near Plymouth. And, and the local police and somebody, people from the, the, I don't know where, police training were, were marching or, and jogging with, I think the new police recruit. The recruit like, academy. The, a recruit academy, yeah. And, and they were there for a long time, working hard. <laughs> Reminds me of a lot of movies that you see. It was, it was really simple. So we, we take a we, yeah, motion to my table. My table as reserve officer for the town of Conway. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Welcome, <laughs> Michael. Officer Michael. Retire me. <laughs> Does he outrank you? Uh, <laughs> more. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that you had the word retired to it. Oh, nice. I think we still have a lot of good contacts, a lot of resources. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. don't stay too late. No, we're not. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. We request to. Uh, officially permit the use of all of the various town comments to put town meeting some informational signs. Sure. On. Yes. Yeah. So we don't need to make a formal motion. No. That's okay. Um, town administrator update. Um, on Thursday, I attend the third in the FERCOG state and federal funding opportunities webinar series, which are they're really good. Um, and I put on their list there, all the different departments that can go through them here. Um, and I also attended the first hour or so of the Vertex public hearing um, and watch it later. <laughs> um, Thursday, I attended the um, MMHR that put on through MMA, the um, Human Resources Boot Camp um, down in Rentham at Lake Pearl, which was really informative. It was really helpful um, to start getting some training some human resources and, and also just to get a perspective from all these people who've been doing it for a long time. One of the things that was nice about the conference was that they, you know, a lot of times they don't have enough time for questions and answers. And they, the last panel was all just these experts up there and the whole thing was just asking mm -hmm. questions, which was really helpful. <laughs> and then that night was back in time to do the floodplain um, public hearing. And then on Friday, I met um, via Zoom with um, the gentleman Paul Fenn and um, uh, about local power to follow up on their request to have a presentation. So it was really interesting. Um, and, and once they realized that I knew what I was talking about and I had a lot of questions for them, um, I gave them some contact information, but some of the issues that come up are, you know, unless you have a whole aggregation of tonnage, you're not gonna be able to make anything work. What town would cite something like this? Just getting through the DEP permitting process, which they said was going to be at least three years. So I gave them some other folks to think about it because there's solid waste districts all in this area, but in Southern Berkshires, there's not. So maybe that might be, mm -hmm. it's still Dalton and Southern Berkshires might be a place to focus on. Mm -hmm. And I'm also doing some research with some former colleagues just about the technology because there's no plant where we could wander through right now and see how it works because um, they're in Japan here. So, so if I find anything interesting from that, I will let you know. And that was my week. Very good. <laughs> so um, any select board member comments or concerns? I just have a, a, a concern that's been expressed to me about town meeting, given that Franklin County is now in a very high risk mm -hmm. of COVID transmission. Um, situation and is there any possibility, any contingency plan for 
people attending remotely or people attending in the parking lot? Do we, but what do we tell people who just don't feel comfortable given the current COVID situation and still want to attend town meeting? This has been the same question. This is the third year in a row, the same question. And well, all, all three years, it's been the same. Right. <laughs> thing. First of all, um, they did track the past two years. There wasn't a single case that was attributed to town meeting. Okay. Um, so, so people, you know, we encourage masks. We are not you, the you can't add additional qualify voter qualifications to come to town meeting. You cannot. Right, we're not requiring this. Well, we're not allowed. To. We're not allowed okay. to require masks. We're not allowed to require proof of vaccination or um, we, we, whatever, whatever. So. Uh, you know, we do set the chairs up so that they're six, they're six feet apart. Um, we, we are, it, we are, we, so we, they, there, they, there has been, um, we're, we're talking now about yes. putting chairs in that sort of a isolation wing, like the, the, the hallway. So, you know, when, when you go in there right in front of the bathrooms and the water fountain is the tables for the registrar, but then behind that, there, you can the, the, a hallway where people do not walk back and forth on, right? And um, so people can be people that don't want contact with others, and you know are really. Um, and we and we broadcast sound out into the hallway last year. Right, right, we right. did, and I had not originally anticipated that, but I'm talking right now with both FCAT and the audio um, technician to see about setting that up in the hallway. Absolutely, the clicker still works that far. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. It, the, we we had in the past looked at um, we looked really hard and with a lot of time and effort into look into setting up in the ball field in front of the grammar school, which couldn't do for a bunch of reasons, or um, or in the ball field here, the tennis court is a hard surface that, you could, but um, it, it's not good for a bunch of reasons too, and um, but they, you know, plus at this point we could never get a tent. <laughs> and you know we do frontier has front, there's an open invitation for the town to use the frontier football field which is set up for graduation the <laughs> night before no or whatever and um and i think in pandemic year one i think all the other towns of frontier took frontier up on that because they were set up um, um already and we were the only we we, we, we had ours in, in the yeah, new garage right, yeah. in, in new garage that year but you know if if you know blinking red alarm fire you know whatever like if we really really no but that's i mean that's i, I mean that, 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 that that's the fact that we've had no community transmission attributed to a town meeting in, you know, since the pandemic yeah and i, I know I'd like to, we'd like to be able to make people feel comfortable, but we're not, we can only do so much, I guess. Is the caseload high here in Conway or is it in Franklin County? I think it's no, what, yeah, and what they did was they recalculated how they're classifying the county. So we went from medium to high, not because of an increase in cases, although they are gradually increasing, but because they, what was medium is now high under the new oh. classification. So um, I haven't gotten this week's, but I have heard of an uptick right now in Conway. But you know, three weeks from now, who knows? And and we're also urged to like not, you know, the, it's not about case counts anymore. Case counts were back when every case was right. a potential death sentence before there was a vaccine. And um, it's about now it's about hospital, and our hospitals are still empty. Yeah, and. Um, Although, I'm hearing about people that that you know they test positive, but they right. have no symptoms. Right. I think I know five people in town right now. Yeah. That that tested positive. positive right now. <laughs> almost no symptoms. But it's all you know. The flip side of that is that whatever positives are out there is almost certainly an underrepresentation because everybody's testing at home, and that's right. you know, that, so. Okay. All um, right. Well, I just wanted to bring that up because but, I said that I would. You know, encourage people to wear masks if they feel better. It's okay to do that. We'll have plenty of masks available. Mm as people come in. As a matter of fact, um, that's where I was planning to give out the rest of the COVID rapid test. Oh, the test, oh. yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy and, your rapid test. And same households should sit together and you can move your chairs close together and then you're further yeah. away from either side. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, well, that's it for me then.
of the next. So next week, we're not How about mail. Is there any mail? I think you might want to talk about that. The letter from Eversource, but you wrote me an email about a letter you got from Eversource. The, about the, you mean Instar? About the it was, it's, aggregation? Yeah, it's the same, yeah. Oh. It's not about the aggregation. No. It, it's, it's, Eversource just sent out a letter about a hearing they're going to have oh, for a rate right, increase sorry. that they're going to have. Right. And it's due to uh, they underfunded um, uh, Mass Safe. And so they're going to be adding money to the distribution side of everyone's bill. And so Conway residents' bill will go up too because it's being added to the distribution All this time side. You call the them up and they said, we, we'll come to your house and give you light bulbs for free. They don't do that Guess anymore. What? Guess what? So, so they sent the bill, letter. Electric bill's going up. If anybody is interested in providing feedback, and as a town, we could, we could give our comments to Eversource and Star. Yeah. Um, but, but they, we should reflexively oppose everything that they every rate increase that comes down the pipe because it's all they what we say will make no difference they're going right. to get their rate increase be, so that's the democrat spirit <laughs> well sorry <laughs> i hate to break it <laughs> come to town meeting oh what we do there i'll have no impact <laughs> uh, uh -oh. did you want to do boris next week since it was in our group uh just a, just a meeting of just Morris. That's great. All right. Um, we can do that at no. Can we do that at the school? Mm. So it's not a so next so next week all we have to do is warrants. But it's also it's also the pre-town meeting next Monday. Typically the selectmen do do the meeting at the school in yeah. the library yeah in the we've already had the meeting in the cafeteria. Or in the cafeteria and it's just not i mean it, uh, full disclosure i will not be here i have to go to oregon for <laughs> two weeks i'm leaving friday morning all right um but yeah. i can so we'll do, we'll do join by phone or so i'll set up the next up uh, the next meeting i put out will be at what 6 45 in the grammar school for the select board meeting yeah sure okay and i'll just be minutes and minutes yeah. Unless there's something else that then we'll go to free time. Unless there's something else that needs attending to. That way we get first dibs at the dessert buffet. So there you go. There you go. Well, are they so, having the dessert buffet? Because last year yes. it was like no food. No, <laughs> no, they're doing the dessert buffet. Yeah, they didn't do food. And I'm gonna miss it. So with that, next week, next meeting Monday, May 23rd, six six forty five at the grammar school. <laughs> And all in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 Aye